opposing counsel. My name is Edward Radzewalski, and I represent the state of Kentonia. The issue in this case is whether Proposition 222 violates the undocumented immigrants' children's right to equal protection under the 14th Amendment for limiting them admission to public school if the school district does not have the means to accommodate them. In 2008, state officials estimated that undocumented aliens cost, cost the Kentonians more than $5 billion for education and various state and local services. In 2007, one study found that Kentonian undocumented aliens, who are 10% of the state's population, only pay 4% of the total taxes. These dire circumstances led the state of Kentonia to have a ballot initiative called Proposition 222, which was approved by an overwhelming 70% of the voters. Proposition 222 allows a school district to deny the education of illegal immigrant children if the district determines that it does not have sufficient funds, space, supplies, or personnel to provide them instruction. Proposition 222 is a law that is related to legitimate governmental purpose. The state is in a recession, and the legal taxpayers of the state of Kentonia voted for Proposition 222 overwhelmingly because of the dire economic circumstances. The Supreme Court has clearly held that illegal immigrants are not a suspect class, and education is not a fundamental right. When those two factors are not present, the court traditionally will not use strict scrutiny to, to require a compelling state interest and a narrowly tailored law to overturn a properly enacted law. Although in Serrano v. Priest, the California Supreme Court finds that education is a fundamental interest, it has no control over this case. The Supreme Court of the United States in San Antonio v. Rodriguez said that the right to education is not found in the Constitution, and therefore it is not a fundamental right. Furthermore, in Plyler v. Doe, the court said that, that, quote, undocumented aliens cannot be treated as a suspect class because their presence in U.S. is in violation of federal law. The distinguishable characteristic is that, is that they are illegal. Brown v. Board of Education has absolutely no relevance to this case because it was concerning a suspect class, race, which is the distinguishable factor in this case. In our case, however, the distinguishable factor is that the immigrants are illegal, which the court has consistently held not to be a suspect class. If the court chooses to go with the standard set in Plyler v. Doe, applying a heightened form of scrutiny, this law certainly passes that test because it absolutely furthers a substantial goal of the state. The school districts, if they had the resources, would give the illegal aliens education. However, the fact of the matter is that many of them have only a limited amount of resources, which must go to the legal and law-abiding residents of the state. However, our case is distinguishable from Plyler v. Doe because in Plyler, the court held that there is no, that, that, quote, there is no evidence in the record suggesting that illegal entrants impose any significant burden on the state's economy. In our case, however, we have plenty of evidence to prove that they do in fact place a significant burden. Again, it is important to point out that illegal aliens cost Kentonians more than $5 billion in various state and local services. They are 10% of the population, but they pay less than 4% of the total taxes. So they use more than they contribute. It, it is imperative that we preserve the rights that legal residents have in the United States. If citizens vote democratically on an issue concerning the state, their voices have the right to be heard. As Chief Justice Berger said in the dissent of Plyler v. Doe, quote, by definition, illegal immigrants have no right whatsoever to be here, and the state may reasonably and constitutionally elect not to provide them with governmental services at the expense of those who are lawfully there, end quote. It is not fair for law-abiding legal residents to pay extra for illegal aliens who gain more money than they contribute. It is true that education is incredibly important. That is exactly why the state needs to manage its money in a way that it will go to the legal residents of the state. Especially due to the grim economic circumstances in the state, it's facing a recession. You, uh, aliens and, uh, legal resident citizens, but doesn't the 14th Amendment state, uh, no person and not, uh, either legal resident or alien, illegal alien, and wouldn't illegal aliens be considered persons? Yeah, um, but the fact of the matter is that the Supreme Court has consistently ruled that, uh, that the illegal immigrants are not a suspect class. I mean, the distinguishable factor is that these are illegal aliens. Technically, 
technically they have no they, um, they have no right to be in the state. Now the 14th Amendment does apply to them. It applies to every single person in the United States. However, it does not guarantee them um, on public education because public education is not a fundamental right. Um, now you stated that the correct me if I'm wrong, the, the funding that goes to education in Cantonia comes from tax revenue, property taxes, and all these things. Um, and there are some people who are there without legal status, immigrants without legal status, who pay taxes. But there may also be some US citizens and immigrants who are documented who fail to pay taxes. Why, why should it be your legal status and not whether or not you pay taxes? If you pay taxes, you contribute to the state, and therefore you should be given an education. Like, they should get what they pay for, no? Can you, um, can you rephrase sure, the question? Sure, definitely. Um, why, if the Medinas, let's say, for example, paid taxes, and some of that tax money contributed to helping fund education, shouldn't their children be allowed then to take advantage of that education versus a US citizen who may have some sort of tax evasion or fail to pay taxes, and their child is benefiting from education when they're not contributing. Does that make sense? Well, the fact of the matter is that those are two different cases. Um, if, if, the, if, the, if the citizen who does not pay taxes, um, something's gonna happen to him. Um, he's gonna go to court, and that's, and that's a different case. The fact of the matter um, is that there are legal residents in this state, and the state is in a recession, and, um, and the school district cannot accommodate all the children. Uh, well, some school districts, remember the law says, it, well, it, it, it does not mean that every single illegal alien will, will not get education. What the law says is that school districts which cannot accommodate them, those, those will deny illegal immigrants education because of money, because of the lack of money. So some districts may in fact give illegal aliens the education. The problem is again that not every single school district can accommodate them. And, and the case that you're referring to, um, if, if there's a normal legal citizen, I think that's a different case that could go through a court. Um, how is it that you think, you believe, there was a study that was uh, done that says that the legal immigrants only account for 10% of the population. So how is it that you believe that this has such an impact on the government where it hasn't changed their financial plan? Because the fact of the matter is that it, it, the, the te that ten percent is a large percent, and it costs the state more than five billion dollars for various state and local services, including education. So it does cost a lot for the state, and we have to and we have to remind ourselves that the state is in a, as, is in an economic recession. So um, it's facing a lot of economic problems, and right now at this time, many school districts cannot afford. Maybe some can, but many can't. But doesn't that five billion dollars? not take into account some of the property taxes and sales taxes that these undocumented aliens have uh, been paying? Yeah, but the fact of the matter is that, that um, the illegal aliens, which are 10% of the population, they pay less than 4% of the taxes. And so, and so the full residents of the state, they have to pay all the taxes. And the Medina's children are very young. It may not have been their decision to enter the U.S. without status. That's a decision made by their parents. Should the Medina's children suffer and be stigmatized um, by a choice of their parents? Shouldn't we keep this a little bit neutral when it comes to children who don't have a choice in the matter? Well, um, the, the distinguishable factor is that they are illegal. That's the distinguishable factor we have to make in this case. They are, they are illegal children. Who, who are here and the state cannot accommodate them. Also, as, as, Chief Ju as Justice Berger said in the dissent of Bible versus Doe, it is not an encompassing e equalizer which is designed to eradicate um, the average distinction for which persons are not, res are not responsible. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Neil Williams and I represent the state of Kentonia.